One in UK adults feel stress every single day. Stress can have profound effects on your body, mind and overall quality of life. To understand how stress works, we need to know the different types of stress that a person can experience. For example, good stress. And yes, there is a good type of stress. This type of stress challenges us to take on new tasks and goals, reinforcing positive behaviours. Even if the outcome is not desirable, the experience promotes opportunity for growth and adaptive characteristics that promote resilience. Tolerable stress refers to situations where an individual can cope with the amount of adversity with the support of family, friends and loved ones. Most often, the individual has healthy brain architecture and therefore is able to cope with adverse circumstances. Finally, toxic stress is where the degree or duration of stress is greater than the individual's ability to cope. This can either stem from limited support or inability to cope with less than ideal circumstances due to the lack of healthy brain architecture, which may be due to early life events that have impaired the individual's ability to cope with adversity. The brain releases hormones when stressed. This is done by the communication of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis, an area of the brain which produces endocrine hormones, which then act on the adrenal glands located on the kidneys. When activated, there is a release of a hormone called cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone responsible for our natural fight or flight response when we are in perceived danger. It can be highly beneficial when in imminent danger. However, when we are in prolonged periods of stress, what effect does this hormone have on our brain? While prolonged stimulation of the amygdala, responsible for detecting and responding to dangerous situations, results in heightened anxiety and panic. As the levels of cortisol continue to rise, the activity of the hippocampus decreases, the part of the brain associated with learning and memory. In fact, chronic stress can lead to fewer brain cells being made in the hippocampus, making it a lot harder to learn and remember things. The high levels of cortisol can result in reduction in synaptic connection between neurons, therefore lowering the activity in the brain. It can lead to shrinking, in particular the shrinking of the prefrontal cortex, which is a part of the brain responsible for reasoning, decision making and problem solving. The reduction in brain activity can lead to further stress, which can then heavily impact our day to day lives, so much so that it can cause depression and anxiety, with chronic stress potentially playing a role in developing Alzheimer's disease. Epigenetics looks at how environment and behaviour can cause certain gene expression. A study looking at how a nurturing mother rodent can influence her offspring. The offspring were less responsive to stress throughout their life. However, the opposite was the case for neglectful mothers. The offspring showed higher sensitivity to stress throughout their lives. Furthermore, a study looking at maternal anxiety in monkeys had shown to have caused chronic anxiety in the offspring. Therefore, genetics and environment plays a strong role in our response to stress. That being said, how we respond to stress on an individual basis can alter the impact it has on our lives. Meditation, exercise, diet, connecting and opening with those close to us can help manage and reduce stress. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe.